Hi, my name is Ben Safir, and today I'm going to talk to you about digital sound, the Web Audio API, and React Redux Web Audio. So, starting from the ground up, what is sound? Well, everyone's heard the, the term sound wave, and that's because sound is just waves. But waves of what? Well, they're waves of air pressure. Unlike waves in water, sound waves are the air compressing and expanding, and the pattern in which the air <coughs> compresses and expands determines what sounds we hear. So here, you can think of the top spring as acting like a water wave, and the bottom more like a sound wave. Uh, if I just play that again. So the difference being, you can see that it's moving up and down as opposed to compression and expansion. So here you can think of those little black dots as air molecules. And you can see where it gets darker, it's compressing, alongside the representation of the wave that most of us are familiar with. Um, and while we're looking at the sine wave, I should mention that a sine wave is the purest and most basic t uh, type of sound wave. Um, so a speaker works by taking advantage of this. The speaker works by using an electrical signal to drive a diaphragm that pushes air, creating these pressure or sound waves. Let me play that again. Um, right, so that's really cool. But uh, how does a computer know how to send an electrical signal to a speaker? Well, it, uh, it can. It converts the electrical signal to a discrete time signal with something called an analog to digital converter, um, or just AD converter for short. The AD converter does this through a process called pulse code modulation. Um, and basically, this works by converting an analog signal into thousands of tiny samples. And these samples are made up of something we're all very familiar with bits. So digital audio has a bit rate, which is the bit depth multiplied by the sample rate. Um, and more bits per sample and more samples per second make higher quality audio. So essentially, the bits hold the information uh, to convey the amplitude of the wave at a point in time. All right, so that's. So how can we make our internet browsers uh, generate or play sound? And this is where the Web Audio API comes into play. The Web Audio API is a high-level library written in C++ that taps into a client-side computer, uh, or sorry, a client-side computer's built-in analog to digital converter. And the majority of the API is extended from this one object in your browser called the base audio context. Uh, to get started using the API, you first create a new instance of an audio context constructor, which extends the base audio context. And so with your new instance of audio context, you can now call functions to create various audio nodes that are all referenced by and linked to your audio context instance. So the audio nodes consist of three basic types, sources, destinations, and effects. And they each have different attributes and methods to play with. To make sound, all you need to do is create a source node. The source node, which in this example is an oscillator node, um, but it could also be a buffer node, which would play pre-recorded or streaming audio. You would then connect this source node to a destination node, which is created when you instantiate the audio context. Um, the destination node taps into the browser's pre-existing connection to the computer speakers. So the API allows for complete modularity in how you decide to connect any type of audio node or audio node parameter to one another. Um, here you can see examples of different ways you can connect various audio nodes. Um, the bottom is a very simple channel mixer. The top right is a simple uh, synthesizer. And the top left is a multi-source digital signal processing chain. So this is every type of audio node you can create with the API. And as you can see, the API consists of just a handful of audio nodes. But the modular nature of the API has allowed for the creation of even higher level libraries like Tone.js, 
uh, which can do some really cool things, which we saw in um, Ian and Robin's demonstrations yesterday. Um, so now that we've learned a little bit about the Web Audio API, let's start using this in our fancy React Redux apps, right? But wait. <laughs> Our React Redux apps consist of so many modular components, and to use the Web Audio API, we now need to pass down this one instance of audio context to all our components and somehow pass around all of these audio nodes from component to component in order to maintain the modular nature of the API. What a headache. Wouldn't it be nice if someone made an easy way to pass around our instance of audio context to all of the components in our React Redux apps? Well, that's exactly what I did. The solution I came up with is a tiny package called React Redux Web Audio. It's a very light wrapper around the Web Audio API and consists of a reducer and a bunch of action creators to use within a React Redux app. To use it, import the audio context, the audio context provider, and use it in the Redux store. From there, the idea is that dispatching the included action creators feels very similar to using the Web Audio API directly. And just like using the API directly, you first need to create an instance of audio context. Um, with React Redux Web Audio, you do this by dispatching the create global audio context action creator, which I would suggest placing somewhere that you only dispatch once um, in something like component did mount method. Um, you can then proceed to use any other action creators included. Creating audio nodes works by passing a string to the action creator when it is called. The string is the name of your new node and can now be used when dis dispatching any subsequent actions to make connections to and from or set any of that node's parameters. And that's essentially all there is to it. So I should mention that this package is still a work in progress. It doesn't include any tests or the full functionality of the Web Audio API yet. But uh, so if you plan on using it, just know that it's subject to change. And that's my tech talk. Thank you for listening.